شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان من الله سبحانه وتعالى who has enabled us to follow the topic of our discussion on the prevailing negative influence of the social media. Today we are doing the concluding uh, edition. And this, I want to start by calling our attention to Surah Rum, Ayah 41, where Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, speaks to us and says to know that mischief has appeared on land and sea because of the evil that the hands of men have earned. And the, the most important thing that I want to bring to our attention there is the statement from our last one of that because of the evil that the hands of men have earned. That we brought, the summary is that the dangers we are facing, we brought them about. The second ayah is in Surah Tarim. Surah 66, the sixth ayah, where Allah SWT says, Save yourself and your families from a fire whose fuel are men and stones, over which are appointed angels that are stern and severe, who flinch not from executing the commands they receive from Allah, but they do precisely what they are commanded. From these two verses, Allah SWT has warned us, the prevailing negative influence of the social media is what we created. We are mostly to blame. We are also stuck. We are the ones using the social media negatively, and we encourage our children. And I mean all this. They copy some of these things from us. If you know it is bad, don't do it. Don't watch film where they do nakedness, where they practice sexual activities. Don't watch it. Once your children get used to seeing you sitting, watching, they also get used to it. If they get used to you seeing you saying no to such things, they will also say no. They will move away from it. They will not want it. So is very, very important. We are the ones defaulting time. Your son, your daughter has seen you that once you come home, good evening everybody, you go back, you sit down, you pick your handset, and you are busy. Your wife rushes in and out of the kitchen, busy in the kitchen, busy on the phone. So much, or you are busy on the television. I still remember a popular joke those days of a child who was asked to write what you want to become or what you want to be. And the young child said, I would like to become a television. The teacher was shocked. Why would you like to become a television? He says, that's what takes the attention of mommy and daddy. Once they come home, you take your homework to them, oh, oh please don't disturb me, don't stop me. They're on the television. Either watching the big screen or watching their answers. So the child looked at the best way to get the attention of your parents is to become the television. You know, a child is doing something. And you say, hey, stop doing it. You say, but mommy, daddy, you just did it. That's what you are used to doing. And they see us doing these things. So we are the ones guiding them in their formative years. We are the ones showing them. So if you default your time to the social media, don't blame your children. They will be better than you in it. They'll be stronger than you. So when we are attacked on social media, don't blame the children. Don't lament. It's what they see you doing that they will copy. Watch your time. Parents must watch their time. The time you spend on social media is very, very important. What is the television to you? Your laptop, your iPad, your tab, your handsets. What do you do with them? 
Do you allow them to consume all your time? So much that you cannot attend to your children. It is wrong. These, I call these things talkatives because they are never tired of talking. The television is not tired of talking. Your phone is not tired of talking. Your iPad, everything. Just put them on. If you try them to go to sleep, they don't sleep. They are not tired. The battery is still on, they will come on. You do it, you go to bed. You are on it. You wake up, the first thing you check, your messages. And your children are watching you, they are looking at what you are doing. And they show interest. Whatever you are doing, your children want to be like you. I will never forget my experience eating bitter cola. And two of my young children came and said, Abu, give us. And I said, no, it is bitter. And you know what? Both, they, they both of them said at the same time, but you are eating it. I said, it's bitter. They said, but you are eating it. Cut small for us. So I cut small. They ate. They came back. Give us more again. They ate. This thing is bitter. But they were eating it simply because they saw me eating bitter cola. It is the same way that they learn to get addicted to social media. And experts say that the time each person spends annually on social media is enough to read 200 books. 200 books. I went for a lecture. I asked our children, boys and girls, now, tell me if you can give me the list of the first 11 of Chelsea. If you see the number of hands up, everybody wanted to participate. And they did. Correct. Okay. The first 11 of England, they did. Correct. Egypt, they did. Correct. I said, okay. Somebody without making a mistake. Give me the list of the 10 surah of the Quran. Bam. Only about two people. A young girl, a young boy, volunteered. All the others, no. That was not their interest. But Quran is also on the social media. All the chapters are there. The Kori were there. Tajweed is there. Our children are not learning that. But they know the full list of players of different countries. They learn all this from the social media. If the time they spend is enough to read 100 books, imagine if they have devoted time to reading a 100 book on Islam. Imagine the, their level of faith, their level of understanding, their level of morality, which will benefit not just you, but the whole human community. Next, we have to provide guidance for the children. Every time they are looking down on their handset, you need to let them know they must look forward. They must look up to move forward. The reality of life, if you're looking down and you want to go forward, the highest possibility is that you are going to fall down. You are going to destroy that handset. You are going to enjoy yourself. Let them know that if they actually want to move forward, they must look up. Looking up means taking some time off the social media, paying attention to other things. Everything about your life is not on the social media. Interact. I was reading the story of a man who called a young boy who was living with him. It's an elderly man. Want to go to the bank. They went to the bank and the man cashed 10,000 naira. So when we were coming out, the young man looked at the, the old man and said, Grandpa, you came to the bank just because you wanted to cash 10,000 naira? The old man said, Yes. He said, Good God. When you have asked me to go to the POS in front of the house, the cost of the POS is not as much as the cost of bringing a car here. And the old man looked at him. Oh, great. 
What about the people I met here? We exchanged greetings. I have to exchange telephone number and address with somebody. Did you see that? Will I, be, will, I, will I have been able to do that if I was looking down on my handset? It will not be possible. We are killing social interaction. We are limiting ourselves. We are limiting our scope. We need to provide guidance. We must understand all the IT terms. What's up? To go. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. You want to know what are they for? What are the positive things, things we can use them for? We need to teach our children how to use these things for positive things. And unless we do that, they will only learn the negative things. Watch for when your children are operating with internet fatwa. They go on the internet anyhow to go and seek. You know the danger with internet fatwa is you are searching. It's just like searching for a book. This fatwa, no, I don't like this one. That fatwa, I don't like that one. Then you see one that is in agreement with what you want and you hold it. Not minding the possibility that that fatwa is wrong. For so many reasons, it could be wrong. So we have to provide guidance for these children. They don't know. We have to provide guidance for them. And we also must provide guidance by reducing the time we spend on the social media. By taking care, not to devote our time to abominable things on the social media. Alas, Mano Tala wants you to warn your family. Ku anfusa kum wa alikum naro. We have to warn them from fire. The fire that's quite very heavy, very deep. We need to warn them. So we must take caution. You want to, while you, you are chatting, whether you are a woman or a man, you are not properly dressed. It is dangerous. It is dangerous on the social media. Be properly dressed. What you think is hidden is seen by so many people. Interestingly, some advanced countries, countries that are advanced in IT, are circulating apps that once you put on your handset, your camera is automatically on. They can monitor you 100%. Everything you do is recorded. So now you are chatting, you are doing video chat. You are sending nude, thinking that I have no problem. I'm talking with my son. I'm talking with my daughter. Or you are chatting with a total stranger. It's like you choose to walk in the dark, whereas you have a torchlight. The touchlight for the Muslim is the Quran. Your guidance. La raib fi, no doubt in it. Hudan lilamutaki is a guidance for those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Monitor the time you consume on social media. Remember, the, that time you consume is a minus on your ibadah. The time you consume is a minus on your ibadah. The time you can use to do nawafin. The time you can use to read the Quran. The time you can use to do askar. Do astagafurullah. La ilaha illallah. Alamu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad wa sallim. Alhamdulillah wa kafa. La la wa la kwa ta'illa billah. Subhanallah bi amdihi. Subhanallah li asim. The time you are supposed to use doing all this, you spend on social media. So every time you are spending, always know it's a minus from your ibadah. You rush into the mosque, you rush out. Just because you want to be on social media. Some are so crazy about it that even while praying, they see what they are for. They still be looking and salat is on. So the, cost, the, the, the constant presence on the social media is a pinch on our resources. The social media is not free. 
you buy data. Sometimes it is from your data that your children will be pinching. They do Wi-Fi and then they are taken from your data. Data is not free. Your time that you are using is not free. So the social media, in a way, is also pinching your resources. And the social media exposes your morality, providing eternal records, as we have said earlier. These records are there. Today, it is common for children. You want to enter university. They say you are too young. Then you go and do a new affidavit. You send it to them online. Good. You get admission. You have created a record on a permanent basis. It is there. Anytime anybody can just go there and say, this guy is a fraud. He did this some years back. So your social media is an eternal record. The messages you have sent, those you have abused, those you have insulted, you will know better if you are a politician. They can always go on your platform, retrieve everything. What you said 10 years ago, 5 years ago, can be used to play around you today. And they will become an albatross for you. So we must be careful, we must be cautious in the way we use the social media. It's very, very important for us to know that if we are cautious enough, we manage our time and we provide guidance for our children, we can mitigate the negative effect of the social media. You cannot do away with it. You make phone calls, but you can reduce the way you use the so social media. We beseech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us benefit from what we have listened to and to guide us away from the negative influences of the social media. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.